I don't know that one. I don't think I I I own the uh, album that had um, Yoda, Y O D A Yoda. <laughs> Yo, 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 da. Da, 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 da. I know what song you're talking about, but I can't think of what album that's on. It's the one before the one where he did the Coolio. One before yeah, that uh, was um, Amish Paradise. The Nirvana one off the deep end. Out for the night. From 92. I think it's off that one. Yeah, that's got the Nirvana one. Yeah. It's got. Oh, Yoda. That was my first Weird Al like, CD. Before, yeah. I had the tapes before that, like the 80s ones, the first couple, but. Adam, Weird Al, are you a fan? Yes, big time. Good. Okay. Well, James, you know song, Chef, it's one of my favorite movies. Do you know uh, the song Everything You Know Is Wrong? No. Go check it out. It's a fun song. It's supposed to be nonsense. It's fun. Wait, what song did he parody? <clears throat> he's not parodying a song. Not all of them are parodies. Yeah, it's a lot he, of he's got my originals as well. He, yeah, well, he they're does, like polka. He does, he does song parodies. He does style parodies. This is a style parody. I guess it's like a. Uh, they might be Giants parody. Okay. Uh, so he does nonsense lyrics, but it, like like if he did a song that sounds like the Beatles but isn't actually a Beatles song, yeah. but yeah, okay, in the Beatles vein, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. There's an animated video you can find online with that. It's pretty fun, but. It will not leave my fucking head. It just it's in there. Wait, what is I it called again? That. Everything you know is wrong. Everything you know is wrong. I play it, but we get copyright struck. So Yep. I won't do that. I mean, are we live right now? Yeah, we're still live, man. Okay. It's a bigger pain in the ass to create a different stream than it is to just roll into the next one and uh, record it. I was walking. To the kitchen for some golden grams when I accidentally stepped into a alternate dimension. I don't know how he would sing that. Why are you starting on lyric two, like the second part? It's I didn't want to. Pl I didn't want to hit play. It's just the thumbnail for the video. Oh, Where now you give it second, everything you know is wrong lyrics. That's the second part. Well, how is he? How would he sing that though? Um, I was walking to the kitchen when I, you know that sort of thing. I was walking to the kitchen for some golden grams when oh, I accidentally right, stepped right, in right, the right, dimension. Right, that, doesn't right, right. Yeah. that doesn't rhyme so at all. Like giants. Yeah. Oh, it's they may be giants. It doesn't have to rhyme. Everything you know is wrong. Fuck is what if it's down in short is long. Everything you used to think is so important doesn't matter. He has a lyric. Forget the lyrics and sing along, which I love. His nonsense. Yeah, uh, Doctor Demento. That's it. He was. Yeah. That's where guys break. Doctor Demento. You guys want to start? Sure. Is okay. Jansen down? We're down. To Jansen, get the out for this one. Did he overheat? Is did it, did, yeah. did Jansen overheat? <laughs> He's going to fix something. Um, his his hood's up. He said, uh, "I'm gra Oh, sorry. That was from earlier. Where he said he's going to grab lube and stuff. I got to dip out. My AC's fucked. Need to figure this out. And I said, "How dare you!" He said, I'm sorry, man. I'm going to say, you let me down. I have lost my faith in uh, fucking iPhone. Jansenism. Wow. Oh, you know what's funny? Jansenism. 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 <laughs> Jansen. It corrected my mistake to Jansenism. <laughs> That's, what the fuck is Jansenism? Is that a thing? It's got to be. It's a corrected to it. It's a religion. I don't want to practice it. Sorry. I do. It really is. A Christian movement of the 17th and 18th centuries based on Jansen's writings and characterized by moral rigor and asceticism. Holy shit. Oh, no my way. God. This is staying on the podcast. Um, let's That's start awesome. So this is I, did, show. I know Jansen was famous. Like yeah. That. Infamous. Um, He's infamous. <laughs> Or yeah, let's go with uh, yes, famous, infamous. Let's go with the Simpsons intro, shall we? Let's Dude. go with this one. Otto, you gotta do something. There's a ghrelin on the side of the bus. Ordering in Wonderland. The Twilight Zone review. Oh dear lord, some sort of hideous monster. <laughs> oh, and that cutie's trying to claw my eyes out. Huh. 
Hello? Hello? Bored already. Miss Elva Keene lives alone on the outskirts of London Flats, a tiny rural community in Maine. Up until now, the pattern of Miss Keene's existence has been that of lying in her bed or sitting in her wheelchair, reading books, listening to a radio, eating, napping, taking medication, and waiting for something different to happen. Miss Keene doesn't know it yet, but her period of waiting has just ended. Ew. For something different is about got a to period? happen. period? Has, in fact, already begun to happen via two most unaccountable telephone calls in the middle of a stormy night. <laughs> telephone calls rooted directly through the Twilight Zone. And the Guinness Book of World Records for the bitch that says the word hello. Yeah. Things in a half hour than anyone else ever lived. We're still listening okay. to that, Frank. You done? Okay. Welcome to the LAW Twilight Zone Review, episode 191. I'm Phoenix West. Wilcox. Today we're talking about Night Call 519 of the original show. It's our first episode going back to the original show in like two months. Something like right. that. It's fucking right. crazy. And um, so long, citizens. Hello? 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 This is Hello? a perfect episode for Jansen. Mm-hmm. We're trying to reach you about your extended warranty. Hello? He always has a thing where if you can't hear something, he'll just go, Hello? Like that, it's fucking funny. And here he is with a perfect opportunity, and he dips out. Shut the fuck up, Frank. He dips out and leaves us. Leaves us high hatted. It's it's a, it's offensive, and I'm, I'm I'm pissed at him, and he's dead to me. And I no longer believe in Jansenism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Jansenite anymore. Is it at least Christian based? I told you, yeah. You are an unbeliever. Absolute. Absolute. He's obsolete. Um, Jansen is obsolete. So, guys. Jan- Jansen walked into the forest one day and he came back with some writings. <laughs> you have to and look at the secret glasses then, no box. Nobody else can be present. And then moved to uh, Utah. Yeah. LC. Utah. Yeah. Yeah. It's so night call. I put out a poll today. Let's start with this because this episode we have nothing to say about. Um, a couple things. It, I did my uh, Mary fuck kill, which is per norm. It it got Mary with fifty percent of the vote. Fuck got ten. Kill got forty. At least forty percent of the, you know the. I want to say population, uh, but at least forty percent like actually you know watch this probably I guess. Well, Frank, this is where we start the debate. Oh, there's like dialogue, even. Yeah, uh, no, between you and me, apparently. So, okay, we'll pause on that. Another poll I put up is because this is an honest question because it's 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 a real serious issue with the Twilight Zone. I wrote, "Who does the Twilight Zone want to kill more?" Gladys Cooper from this episode. She's also in Nothing in the Dark, Passage on Lady Anne, and Night Call. This episode, or Ed Wynn, One for the Angels, or Ninety Years Without Slumbering. Uh, her. Yeah, really yeah. her. I mean, even though the devil does come for Edwin both times, I think, right? Doesn't or no. But I mean, literally death comes for her every goddamn time. Exactly. I I vote for Glad- Gladys Cooper. Yeah. She won with 90% of the votes, by the way. Uh Gladys she Cooper, all three of her episodes is about her going off to fucking die. And this episode she isn't dying, but she's clearly like death's like, go fuck yourself, you're next. That's what it's about. She Ed should Wayne has one episode where he defeats death and, and and tricks it, and he dies anyway. But he goes in willingly. The second episode is where he goes, nah, fuck death, I don't care, and he lives. So with that math, I'm going Gladys Cooper. Definitely. Yeah. Both people though. Sometimes he's the gas man. <laughs> Last week he was the electric man. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 I love that they have a British Hello. actress. They have a British actress. And then Rod comes on and goes, she's from London Flats. I go, oh, good. One of the rare episodes that isn't about war or another planet where it's not set in the States. 
in Maine. And then she get, he goes, London Flats in, in Maine. But she has a British accent, nonetheless. What the fuck is to say? It's in London, bitch. No. Come on, Rod, bitch. To say it's in London, he won't. Like he he took baby steps. He's like, no, no, it's in Maine. I'm just fucking. <laughs> anyway, it was a phone call. And then One of these days, the Twilight Zone will take place in Europe. <laughs> is there? There's a scene in Mute in the beginning of Mute. Remember, they're in Germany. Yeah, it. it's pretty much it. I yeah. can't think of anything else. It's not. And then space. they moved to Germany, Pennsylvania, or something. yeah, German town. <laughs> German, yeah, which that actually is a place. Yeah, it is. But yeah. can you name another episode? Oh, I thought of one that's uh, but that's supposed to be in in Germany. So you know what I'm talking about. That's supposed to be there. What from season four? No, from season two, three, season three. Oh yeah, Death has re- okay, yeah, yeah, that's, that's supposed yeah. to be there because that's what uh, the camps are. Dachau, yeah, yeah. Um, so that doesn't count. I'm looking for a, a regular episode, not about, like I said, war or space. That's not set in the States. Nope. In the jungle, he talks about Africa, but we don't really fucking see Africa, really. Well, I mean, in the short story that it's adapted from, they were in Africa a lot. I think the whole thing happened in Africa, I believe. I could oh. be wrong about that. I fucking hate that episode. It's anyway, so I'm Phoenix West. Did we say that? We did that, right? right? Okay. Oh, uh, the fuck am I? I don't know where to begin with this episode because it is literally just a series of non phone calls where a woman gets a essentially what is it, a phone call equivalent of a ding dong ditch. And then she answers the phone and goes, Hello? Why are you calling if you're not going to say hello? Hello? And that's the episode. Like the guy on the other line literally goes, Or hello? Hello? Or he, he goes, uh, he says something like, uh, I'm not going to bother you because I do what you tell me. And she doesn't react to any of it correctly. Like, it's not in pace with each other. <laughs> He's going, hello. She's like, hello. Cutting them off and shit. <laughs> I want to know who's calling me, but I keep gonna, I'm keep i going to keep cutting them off <laughs> and scream hello at them. <laughs> I forgot I put up a third poll. Which is which haunted telephone episode is better, long distance call or night call? Long distance call. I disagree. Night call one was sixty six point seven percent. Yeah, it's a hard call. They both are just terrible. I don't yeah. mind this episode. Really? I actually like this episode. Yeah, I, I'm sitting here waiting. I'm like, did we watch the same episode? Okay, Adam, take it, man. What did you like about it? I'm getting it? like. I, this kind of reminds me of like one of those classic like hammer horror type movies. You got the lightning in the background. You got a little bit of storm. You got a pretty good setup. You got some genuinely unsettling phone call prankery going around. Plus, can I mention that this actress has a really kick-ass accent? I love her like proper British accent. I don't know. I just think that's, that's cool. All right. It, it kind of reminded me a little bit of a hammer horror episode. And some of the phone calls, especially when the guy is just kind of going, uh, like I wanted to laugh, but the more I heard it, it started to become unsettling, and it kind of gave me goosebumps a little bit. And uh, I, I like where this episode went. I found it genuinely unsettling, and I thought it was pretty well acted and pretty well paced as well. There's, there's definitely a lot of tension building going on. It. I know not a lot happens, but yeah. they make good use with what little is there. I completely agree with what Adam just said. It, it works for me. I hate long distance call. Other than the fact that I thought it was funny that a grandma tries to kill a child by making him drown in a little koi pond out back. <laughs> but other than that, man. I mean, what? I, I thought it was hysterical. I mean, like, she's just trying to kill this kid over and over. And yeah, over. you think it's hysterical outside of the actual episode itself, though? Yeah, this one is just, um, I, I mean, I, I remember the first time I watched it, it, because I was watching it, like, I think it was like late at night, because. It was on a marathon, I think, and it was like two in the morning. So, and it was a bit of something like, like you know, Adam was saying, like they did capture the atmosphere and all that. And she is a good actress, but you know, uh, after after watching them all a couple times and watching this with more of like, you know, my I already know what's going to happen. Like I couldn't get the last episode she was in with Robert Redford out of my head. Like that's all I kept thinking about. I think it, yeah. like it, I think that episode ruined this one for me. To be honest with you. Well, same thing with me and Ed Wynn, where I just hated 90 Years of Slumbering. 
I think yeah, that's a terrible dude. fucking episode. That was a rough episode. I hate that episode. It is really bad. Yeah, but I mean, we're going from Edwin season what one episode two to yeah. season four. I mean, this this chick was like within the same two months of each other almost. It felt like it wasn't that close. I know, but no, nothing in the dark is, is season three. That's what I mean. Season three to season five. I mean, it's yeah. Well, I mean, in TZ years, that's only two years. But I, I, I when it came out, when the next one is, I, I was just thinking about it, and it made me think. Oh, this! I, I, I hated the episode on its own, but this one. Remember, I, I remember when we did that episode. I was, I was like, this is not one I remember from the phone. Call. This is this today is the episode I remember from the phone call, phone call episode. Okay. So this is the one I was looking forward to. I didn't realize it. Um. Yeah, you were having a hard time like describing because like it was right right on the edge of your mind, like because it was right right on the edge of my mind, like where what what episode was she from? Oh my god, it's like, oh yeah, that's right. It took me like this one. Minutes. I we're going off what Adam was saying. It's a really simple episode. There's not a whole lot of story. You don't find out much, but that's kind of the point. It's it's like a it's a urban in the early days of this podcast. I would describe them as certain uh, genres. One of them was Urban Legend. This is an Urban Legend episode. This is 100%. You would read this in the Scary Stories is Telling the Dark book. Yep. It's one of those type of stories. It's Urban Legend. That's all it is. And it, it, it could be a creep show or even a Tales from the Crypt, honestly. It, it, it would yeah. fall into that. Yeah. This, this but, is like the first creepypasta ever. <laughs> yeah. Much. But I like... I like this episode. I like Rod's simple, concise introduction. He doesn't put too much into it. He doesn't tell you what's happening. He just says she's getting phone calls. Let's find out. He doesn't spoil it like he did in some early season five episodes. He doesn't. But he sets it up nice enough and kind of goes, here's the story. And the story is a woman keeps getting old woman keeps getting a phone call. And the the person, she doesn't hear anything for a while. Keeps hanging up. But she doesn't hear the dial tone. She doesn't hear the actual hang-up noise. It just cuts out. Like it never happened. And that's really the whole story. Is her maid comes over. She talks to the maid. And the maid's like, I didn't... No, I don't know what you're talking about. Like she listens to the phone. The maid never reacts to the phone ringing. Which is kind the of The one thing amazing... that she does, though... If she picks up the phone, it's not the creepy caller. It's actually the phone uh, company, which I thought was a nice touch. Because I kept thinking, I'm like, well, why don't she pick up the damn phone and get creep called? But somehow, the party, we won't, we're, I don't want to skip ahead, the party knows not to talk when she answers the phone. So, at least I, I got that. You think it's all in her head anyway? That's why. That's that's yeah. kind of what I'm building to here. Um, let's finish the, the synopsis and then we'll get into that. Because that is the most interesting part of this. Mm-hmm. Is she because it's so fucking simple and straightforward. It's her continuously answering a phone call, and nobody responding. Eventually the voice goes, Hello. Hello. And that's it. And then she, and then it's her calling, it's the main character calling the phone company and being like, Who the fuck's calling me? What the fuck? And the phone company's like, wait, an electrical thing. It's probably just cross wires and drop connections and shit like that. You know, typical corporate bullshit. Typical yeah, spectrum. Yeah. There was a storm. There's damn wires everywhere. It's going to take yeah. a little bit. You know, you're lucky your phone's even working to begin with. So, you know, be happy. Well, is well, it going to happen again? Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll consult my local tarot card reader and let you know. <laughs> and the reason I put off that conversation of is it real or not is because the next plot point is is when Adam was saying is when she calls from the phone company and says we we trace the call that uh, the the call that was where it was coming from and there's some down wires there so nobody could have called from there so it makes you go there's evidence that it happened in real life because otherwise how do they trace phone lines if there wasn't actually a call that took place does that make sense Adam yes Frank's walking away we had two quitters in the show Two quitters. What the fuck's going on? I'm bleeding. bleeding oh, fuck you. <laughs> um, they trace it to some down wires. Eventually, the old lady leaves the house, and the maid's like, I don't advise you leave the house. They haven't done this in years. They go out there. It's the wire detached on the grave of her her ex fiance from 1933. Brian. And I was like, she's like, he, he died. He is. And I was like, oh, he fucking killed himself to get away from you. But she ended up telling the story that she was driving the car. 
she's a woman driver, so she's terrible, hits a, hits a tree or something, and then he flies out the windshield and dies. And I was like, that makes sense. Th- this adds up. She was kind of graphic about it, too. Yeah, she seemed a little uh, like she's rumbling one out under, the sh- under her blanket. He went he went right through the through the windshield. Wicka, 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 wicka. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck she was doing. She was really reminiscing. I can't believe she she was just went she he was just tore all the fuck up and I was like wow. his cock broke the windshield first <laughs> she shock first she's, going, she's like Clarissa he was all cop that's what I used to call him my <laughs> old cock Brian that kind of body I'm gonna stick my dick in the mashed potato <laughs> windshield smasher yeah mashed, uh, mashed potato fucker yep yeah. It just keeps going in graphic detail about how hung this guy was and how he's dead. dead. And yep. uh, clearly she's guilty about it. And she, she, she also no- admitted that he's a submissive and she's a dominatrix, which I thought was kind of weird. I know. She was pe- she they, they were they were they were they were they were leaving the Hampton Inn. Really? Tell us what happens in a Hampton Inn. Uh, you hear it every goddamn be- <laughs> hey, me? Oh, get me off of the goddamn screen, Adam. <laughs> so for, the, for the podcast listener, uh, Adam just put Frank on the big screen and wrote in the quotes like a comic book. Text. Yeah. Um, I like that you had that ready. That is I originally made that for Pete, but it kind of fits Frank too. So kind of, it fits Frank way better. <laughs> it really does. I'm sorry, Frank. Okay, I mean, you know, there's a reason Phoenix knows all about it and everyone else does. We're having fun here. I'm not ashamed of anything. I don't give a shit. We're having fun like we're in a Hampton Inn. Oh, fuck yeah. Whatever. Throw it on the couches every time. You you might think you're right in the Frank. Yeah, I mean, you might think $100 a night is a lot, but not when you're ruining a couch. It's basically you're buying a couch for $100 and having a good time. I mean, can you put a price on that? I was going charge you for the couch. Very interesting, but stupid. I thought we were going to have too many clips. That's how you feel after you come. <laughs> you go, oh, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> Seemed like oh, a good where, idea. Oh, oh, the old lady. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know, She's Fritz, on the period. I yeah. meant to bring this up last time, but Jansen cut me off. Fritz Weaver died four years ago. That's it. Really? He died in 2016. Shit. He he was wearing his pants up to his fucking tits back then. Yeah. God damn. I mean, she died. Let me look at He was up. part of the mass celebrity exodus of 2016. She died in 1971 at the age of 82, which makes I'm sense. I'm shocked at that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm shocked it wasn't 1965. <laughs> she doesn't look in ill health, but she's clearly elderly at this point. But she's only in her sixties here. She sixties back in the sixties was fucking ancient. Rough. <laughs> yeah. She was well, she in a car crash like before this? Like she only looks a couple years older than Rob. Oh, she died in, she had a she died at eighty two. So she was in her seventies in this, but still. They also you could tell they put made it almost to a hundred? They eighty two. 60, 70, 80, 70, 80, 90. So like mid nineties, right? She died at age eighty-two. Oh, yeah. So you could tell they they Sorry. kind of did. They helped along her age with some makeup a little bit. Like they tried to extend, you know, make they her wrinkles pop out. You could tell they were doing that. They took some of the makeup off. <laughs> <laughs> the last movie you did has some make. Want to take his makeup? I need surgery. <laughs> Nick Cassavetes, call us. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Gene Simmons. <laughs> Gene, Gene Simmons, demon. <laughs> Whatever. I, I, I don't know what you guys are talking Fuck. about last episode. I'm a face off. I, I figured you were, but the last one I saw was Demon I was. So, yeah, I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, so, yeah, they find the down wire on the grave, and she realizes it's her ex fiance, Brian, right? Brian. Uh, she goes home, she answers the phone immediately, and she's like, Brian, Brian, dig big dick Brian who flew out the windshield dick first. Fuck that tree when he hit it. Brian. All, all cock Brian. 
And this is where the episode gets hilarious to me. Is because it could have been a sweet episode where he's like, oh, come to me, sweetie, which is what I expect, which is what most people expect. Come to me, sweetie, a typical urban legend storyline where she's she's uh, near death, kind of like nothing in the dark. She's receiving like messages from beyond, beckoning her to come into the light, you know? That's what I expected. Adam, is that what you were expecting as well? Yes. Okay. That I think that's what the, the general audience is expecting. But instead, this is where I, I take this episode and I gave it a seven. Is instead of that, because she told him to fuck off before, he goes, you told me to fuck off and I have a big dick that went through the windshield. What the fuck, bitch? And she's like, no, don't go anywhere. I'm so sorry. Please come with me. Just can't talk to me. And he's like, go fuck yourself. I'm going to go fuck some Hello. 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 I got a halo and I can't even fit my dick in that thing. It's that big. And then Jesus. Christ. <laughs> yeah, it gets really graphic. It's fucking bizarre. But then he hangs up on the bitch and she's like, and she sits there all sad. And I'm like, wait, I was waiting for that third act because she's sitting there in her bed dying because she's so he's old. Like, I don't want to be alone anymore. And he's bed like, well, I'm hanging up on you now, though. Yeah, so bye. She's crippled from that accident. So she's been crippled since 1933, which is what his tombstone reads. So she's yeah. been sitting there for 31 fucking years at this point, laying there. And then I expected it like a, I expected her to go, oh, I love, I still love him and I miss him. Oh, go be sweet in the night. But instead, it go, it's Rod coming and going, this bitch learned a lesson when she's an octogenarian. Don't be a piece of shit. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, this episode is amazing. Appreciate the big cock that you got. Yeah. Also, because I watched so much mystery science theater, there was a couple of times, and then finally I stopped. I'm just every time she said hello, it's like, "Hi, we're trying to reach you about your expired warranty. Uh, we want to extend your your the warranty on your uh, on your car." And then I felt bad because I found out she's like crippled and in a wheelchair from a car accident. So uh, the expired warranty thing, not as funny as I initially thought. No, it's funny. <laughs> Still funny, yeah. It's it's not real. It's not real. She is a dead person in real life. Mm -hmm. well, but so it's a cool accident, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, okay. So, Phoenix, what did he you hear? Advertisements, advertisements, advertisements. All made out of alum aluminium. 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 <laughs> <laughs> More advertisements. I I swear to God, up to two years ago, I thought aluminium and aluminum were two different things. <laughs> I was like, I never, I don't remember reading that on a periodic table. What is that? I'm going to take a lift up my flat and grab an aluminum hat. My poor name is Aluminium. <laughs> an aluminum Al wheel hat. <laughs> Al that's good. That's actually good. Al Albert, Albert, Albert Luminium. <laughs> I go by Al for short. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> so you heard that. Phoenix, no, did you no. hear anything every every time she said hello? I heard Jansen, like I said. Okay, so I I heard. Remember that song? It's like hello. Every time she said hello, I heard hello. <laughs> hello from the other side. <laughs> I hear your cock went through the windshield. <laughs> And you fucked the oak tree upon removal. Oh. Now I'm in this chair. I had to bury you seven feet deep for reasons. Hello, is it me you're looking for? I can see it in your smile. I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your smile. <clears throat> it's you that's calling me hello. So many lines. The cocks in your throat. It's so big. It makes you smile. <laughs> big Dick Brian. Big Dick Brian died. And R.I.P. Okay, let's get back to reality. Snap Rest back to reality. <laughs> um, let's talk about Mom Spaghetti. But let's first let's talk about spaghetti. Spaghetti. The, spaghetti. I love that it's a big fuck you to this character, and he, he literally says uh, in the outro, which you'll play soon, but um, not yet. But he says she learned a responsibility. I'm like, the bitch is an octogenarian. What the fuck is she going to learn lying in a bed? Does she really need to learn a lesson right now? I mean, the TV right, the really, yeah, really late to the call right here, Rod. I mean, this is why I say earlier in the 
when we first started doing our shows together, Frank, you always said like the the, the Twilight Zone punishes people, and I go, not necessarily. This woman did, had an accident, and a guy well, she, died. She could have been smoking meth at the time. You don't In know. She caused the accident. Yeah. Cocaine, if anything. Yeah, definitely cokehead, dude. I mean, that wow. was just that was. I like, mean, you, just, you said so. She was giving the guy a hand job, and he drove into a tree. She was giving a hand job with one hand with that guy. So you got to fucking. She's driving and jerking. Chump, chump. you got to really get at that guy. And the car careened off the road and smacked the fucking oak tree, which he fucked on the way out. He's fucked one of those tree nut things and gave some squirrels some nuts. And I don't blame her, though, for this accident. It sounds like she was just, she lost control the way she described it, unless she's a horrible liar. But it's like she got tortured and then Rod's like, bitch, her on a lesson. Now she's crippled and dying. Fuck you, bitch. Bye. It's like, I think the lesson that she's learning is she's alive. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that, Rod? No, come on, Rod. Really? I have a heart, man. Yeah, that's why I was like, "Holy shit!" This ep- this ending is awesome. Rod's like, "I just work here." I mean, you know. <laughs> so it sounds like I liked it the best, and then Adam, and then Frank. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I I, yeah, actually, yeah. I I was scored a little higher than you. I, I was going to give this one an eight out of ten. I, I like this you one. Gave obsolete man an eight out of ten. Oh, I hate you. I hate you so much, Adam. I thought they were both good episodes. Where are you? You're over here. Can't take it away from him. Yeah. No. Um, it is. Okay, so Adam liked it better than I did, apparently. Although yeah, he, because I was entertained by this episode. Yeah, yeah, but entertained, I think Absolute Man is way fucking better than it, this It episode. might be, too, because, like I said, we spent weeks doing Jordan Peele's Twitterverse, and then we came back to this, and I'm like, oh, I love classic Twilight Zone <laughs> again. God damn it. Even the shitty ones are good, you know? Eight out of ten. Um, <laughs> I can't disagree with him on that. <laughs> I kind of weighed myself in a little bit. So, because I, I, I was skipping around a little bit, just bored earlier. And like I said, I was looking up Twilight Zone shit all day because I have a bunch of intros. I have 16 introductions for this show now, 16 theme songs. Awesome. So, That's- look forward to that shit. <laughs> all from different TV shows. So, yeah, it's gonna take a while to get through them all, but um, a lot of them are Futurama. They had six of them, but um, yeah, I like the episode. It's, and I thought I was gonna hate it. I was really expecting today to be like, "Fuck this episode, fuck, fuck, fuck," but I really liked it. I don't know, Frank. What do you give it out of ten? Five. That's not too bad. I didn't like this at all. Okay. I mean, I hated it a lot more worse. What this, didn't you like about it? I guess is where we'll start with that rating. Her, just the hello thing. It got on my nerves after a while. It really did. From the other side. Hello. 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 She had she had like two tones. It was hello or hello. It was one or the other. And it was over and over. It was so repetitive. Let me show you something, Adam. Go ahead and talk, Frank. I was just saying, like, uh, what is he doing? He is a lunatic. He is out of his fucking mind. Six shows. What is he doing? What is that? Oh, did you build it yet? You finished it? You build it. I will come all over this. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, nice. It is, it is really getting there, isn't it? It's a nice project. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to do Are you gonna put like, real spaghetti on it and then, like, dry no, it. I'm going to paint this shit. I, I'm done. I'm going to paint mm-hmm. it now. Yeah. You going moon gray? Moon gray. Well, technically elephant gray. What's the difference? They don't sell moon gray for some reason. So, for the listeners, I'm holding up a, a ball I made out of styrofoam, and I put two bottles of giant tacky glue on this to make craters and mountains. If you look, I was going to ask: Did you whittle that thing, or did you? Did nope. you? I just put glue on top, so you got little craters. That's really good. It took Actually. fucking a week, two weeks, however long it's been. But if you look, well, you can see like ridges and stuff. Make sure you get Tycho's crater on the bottom, the South Pole. It's not the moon. Oh. It is supposed to be the moon. I'm just not doing it. Well, I understand. Um, Tycho's yeah. crater is pretty fucking like obvious when you say it. It's that one crater on the bottom that kind of covers half the goddamn thing. Yeah, I'm not going for accuracy. I'm just making a moon. Tycho Brohan. Brahim. How about this? Mr. Sans 3000 will be over top of that. 
Let's do use your imagination. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the other side of the moon looks so much different than the one that we see all the time. It's very yeah. strange how different it is. I always thought that was weird. Anyway, That's where uh, the undesirables go. I should be done with it soon. So there must be a lot of them because there's a lot more smaller craters on that side. <laughs> it's like it's little gonna people hanging up in the background when I move offices. It's gonna hang <laughs> somewhere back here for every episode we do. So nice. I'm trying to put a little work into it, you know. Yep. Yep. Looking forward to. It. I don't want to go this color with it, like the I did. I on the tattoo, I got the kind of the yellow one they do. How many hours does that take? I don't know, three or four. Damn, that's quick. Yeah, looks like, looks like a but, lot of detail for three hours. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, should be done with that soon. But anyway, the episode. Um, I was thinking Adam would get a kick out of that, but he, he was in totally indifferent. No, he's mesmerized. Look at him. He's no, like, I like no. yeah. He's like, I want it's that. Really better when it's painted. I want that on both ass cheeks. Like, half you know how much work I'm How many different grays yeah. I have? I have <laughs> like, all different I grays. Yeah, the thing gray. is, every time I see the, uh, the, 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 when I watch Mystery Science reruns and they always do the cutaways for the commercials yeah. and they show that thing spinning, I'm always thinking, is that like spaghetti that they like glued on there? Or Because it, it looks like spaghetti. I thought maybe you were going to put spaghetti on it. No, that would just rot and smell awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, they have spray, with, uh, with, spray with hairspray. He preserves it. They have on that show. It's um, what is that shit called? Yarn. No, no. It's 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 like a plaster type. It's a spray, and plaster you put it like, around what? Plaster Paris. Is that what you put around like window? You used to put it back in the day. You used to put around window seals. Oh, um, that caulk. Shit. No, it's not caulk. It's a spray. Asbestos. <laughs> Probably was made out of that. <laughs> It was, really, it was a yellow. I think it came out a little whiter, but it, it dried yellow. So if you go into like old windows and look at the seal, it had like this gross yellow foam stuff. It was white at one time, and then it yellowed yeah, from the sun. It, it turns yellow. I, I put this on my old windows in my old house, and you put that. You spray it on there, and it turns this gross yellow. I made a ball. I actually made a previous Mr. Science Theater ball like twenty years ago out of that stuff, and it looked great. You know, I really have no idea what you're talking about. I'm not a carpenter, I'm an electrician, sir. Yeah. But if uh, when you next time you're looking, look at like old windows in the inside and like attics, because you don't cover it up in an attic. Why would you? Who gives a shit? And it's just like in the inside of the window seal or like in the inside where they try to insulate it from the from down below. So no no air is coming up into the attic, you know. They do it in there, mostly in attics. Where else would they might do it? There you maybe, go. Maybe maybe like the side of the house louvers, maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to go into detail. I know what you're trying to do, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's that stuff, but that's what they made that ball out of. It looks like that's what I'm guessing just by looking at it. That's it looks very reminiscent of that. Or it's a spray foam. That way you get the lines coming down in the spray. It worked. <laughs> it worked. My last ball looked better than this one. No, this one's okay. I'm just messing with you. Um, anyway. Yeah. Well, so, like, uh, Rob. I guess I don't know where else to go with this. Let's no, let's, let's talk a little bit more. Um, we're we're pretty quick in this episode. Oh yeah, do Rod, and then we'll talk about the implications of the episode and what yeah. we think actually happened. Got you, got you. Oh yeah. Uh... <laughs> According to the Bible, God created the heavens and the earth. It is man's prerogative and woman's to create their own particular and private hell. Case in point, Miss Elva Keen who in every sense has made her own bed and now must lie in it. Sadder but wiser by dint of a rather painful lesson in responsibility. Transmitted from The Twilight Zone. I don't know what that is. Okay, guys. A couple things I want to say. There's a Whoopi Goldberg movie called The Telephone where she's talking to a telephone for 90 minutes. Ugh. And at the end, they reveal that one's not plugged in. That's a whole movie. Well, I mean, so, they pulled off a phone booth. Phone booth had a plot. It's true. Being out on the phone. She's literally talking on a phone. And then it ends with, oh, the phone wasn't plugged in. She's crazy. Was it all exposition from her and you didn't hear the other person on the other side? Or did you I haven't seen that? it since I was a child, so... Oh. I didn't remember that happening. 
And my dad, every once in a while, when I was talking to him, would <laughs> pop up and go, you need to do that movie, and I cannot find a copy of it. What's even? Uh, uh, what's it called again? The Telephone. Very generic. Yeah. Good so, luck with that one. <laughs> that's, a, that's a long Google search. <laughs> so if, I think I would feel that way about that movie, with what Frank's feeling about this one in only 25 minutes. That's a lot of Google images of Whoopi Goldberg having a cell phone in her hand. <laughs> Not a cell phone. That's from 1988. Yeah, but good luck telling Google that. There's your link over there. <laughs> there you go. A crazy out-of-work actress. They say, they say it in word two. A crazy out-of-work actress. <laughs> Vashti Blue spends well, all her time in her small apartment with her pet owl and her telephone. Which she uses pet to owl? All her problems with life. Rip Torn directed it. Oh my god. Wow. Rip torn. Now I have to see this again. Are you looking up the, the link, Adam? What link? In the chat. These pictures are great. Oh god. She's got a fishbowl. Why does she have a fishbowl? She she's Whoopi Goldberg. Bowl. She's crazy. Well, it says in word two, she's crazy. I know. And has a pet owl, apparently. You have to be crazy yeah, to have a pet owl. owl. Yeah, it looks like there's a bunch of other voices in there, so apparently they're all imaginary. <sighs> I don't know. That movie looks fucking terrible. It has a 4.5. You want me to share this? <clears throat> what? You want me to share this? Yeah, might as well. Um, okay. It's it's, like, it's god-awful. Like I haven't seen it since I was a child. But yeah, scroll through there. Pet Owl. <laughs> there's no owl in the picture. Wow, that's really 80s. Look at the front of that fucking... VHS. <laughs> that's a, a lot. That's a lot of '80s colors right there. There's actual VHS spread coming up here. Keep going. You'll, there it is. <laughs> look at that. Woof. <laughs> Keep going. All right. That does not look like something I would rent from Blockbuster no, ever. In the case is so fucking boring. That looks like is a this one. Is she painted? Is that? I remember when she was like a big draw too. I like when she was put on uh, Star Trek: Next Generation. That was like a real big deal. Well, yeah, this, no, this, no this, eyebrows. Oh, got me. Pre Oscar for Ghost. This is, yeah. I have no idea. Online and off, and off the wall. She's on the line and off the wall. Yeah, El Telefono. <laughs> no la. Sorry, la, telefono. La, la, la Telefona. Anyway, that's a movie that exists. So if you're curious, if you can give me a copy of that movie, let me know. Literally no. never heard of it until you mentioned it today. More thing than one at gmail.com. Let me know. Not for nothing, but this movie looks right up your both your guys alley. Yeah. Really, I mean, this is this is primed. It's gonna be bad, Adam. We should do this. The phone is is that is that zebra? Only if we can riff the shit out of it. Yeah, it's zebra. It's zebra. <laughs> the phone is. Zebra. If you have a copy of this movie, please call me. Over and over, and do it your best coming voice into the phone, like in this episode. He'll never uh -huh. answer. Oh. Oh. My dick oh. is breaking on the top of my grave. It's over six feet. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um, the whole time this episode, I was like, oh, oh my joke. <laughs> Unplug the goddamn phone, you bitch. That's all I kept screaming. And then the maid comes in and is like, there you go. Mystery yeah, but all you hear is bah, and eventually you'll hear beep 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 beep. Yeah, the I mean, point is she wasn't hearing that. That's kind of the well, she tried to wrap it up in a in a knitted blanket because everything this chick wears she knitted herself apparently because she slept in something she knitted in while she's laying under something she knit, and then she wrapped the phone up in something she knit. <laughs> if you're laying in bed for 31 years. Oh hell yeah! I'm going. I'm going to knit myself. I'm going to be a crocheting machine. Oh yeah, it's going to be insane up there. It's going to be like a Bangladesh sweatshop up there. It's going to be insane. Like, <laughs> like, I'm making everything up there. Oh, you know what kills me? Like the and and the phone. The other thing that drove me nuts is my fucking cell phone ring is almost identical to that phone ring. I was reading into it. Apparently, that phone is from 1933. Really? That's what it said. I thought it was a bit old for the 64-ish yeah. crap. So that's why she's getting phone calls on that phone. Surprised she didn't put up her ear. Hello? Hello? 
I thought it looked too new, new to be 1933. Because it did say I'm... Klondike 54425 or something. I also read into that. I finally understand the Klondike thing as of today. So Klondike is this K, so five. So we're literally here, phone number is 555. And above it said K. Yeah, which is five. Yeah. I know. So five, 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 yada, yada, yada. And I didn't realize they changed it, so they're actually releasing 555 numbers to the public. So it's only 555-0001 through 0199 that are available for movies now, which is weird. Was that the, was was that after the eight the the Jenny song eight six seven five three no, like I, I that that person was really upset about that song. Rick Springfield was not too happy, but <laughs> was it his real number? No, it's Jenny's number. It's Jenny Jenny. Was it the real Jenny? Really? I don't know if that's the real Jenny, but it's a Jenny. You got to find out the area code first, sir. You got to track that shit down. Good luck. Google it. Well, there's there, there can only be so many area codes with that specific number. Nine hundred ninety nine. You gotta find that shit. That's not that many in the grand scheme of things. I'm just saying. Look, if you want to dial all those numbers, go right ahead, Frank. I'd love to find out your results. It's literally zero point zero zero one percent of the population that I'd have to call. Yeah, Phoenix. That's still I a lot of people. I guarantee I, there's a Jenny I up in there, quest, sir. Jenny, Jenny. Fucking stop it. I get it. So you're going to get some guy in Boston in one of those calls. Fuck you. Fuck you, Rick. <laughs> Mr. Springfield with all due pull it. Fuck yourself. Fucking Springfield. Just screaming it. I want you to recut this episode with like just ridiculous things on the other end of the phone. Like, pick up the phone. Or, we've been trying to reach you about your expired warranty. Or, is it Hi, this is Microsoft calling. You have a virus on your computer. Just bullshit like that. Hey, I'm a hot single in your area. <laughs> hey, it's Big Dick Brian. I uh, fucked that windshield in that oak tree. You're going to call me back, bitch, anyway. Bye. You owe money to the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Do that. Your porn videos are overdue. Please. <laughs> <laughs> You have an overdue videotape from Blockbuster. <laughs> you rented Big Booty Bitches, 37. Please bring it back. I had one, one call me from Microsoft that said my IP address had expired. That doesn't exact, <laughs> That doesn't happen. No, a person this age, though, in this episode will fall for that. Right. You live in Florida, so you must get a lot of those. Oh, you have no fucking idea. <laughs> no, I don't. They don't call here. So, so many. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they don't want to get cursed out. So, we're looking up what area goes to that. Yeah. All right, your nephew's in a federal prison. Please send $1,000 to, like, I heard those too. I've done that before, and it happened to be my friend Justin. He was in jail. <laughs> like, that wasn't a joke. <laughs> yeah, you can call him back and go, hey, is this guy in jail? Last time I talked to him, too, he yeah. I sent him 100 bucks in jail. He's like, yo, I'll get, you, I'll get you back when I get out of here. I don't know if he's dead or what. I hope he's all right. I would like my hundred bucks back, Justin. By the way, sounds like he's dead. Yeah, probably. Do you want to do a unsolved mysteries on Justin right now? <laughs> okay, everybody, go find all day Jigga J from the 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 Detroit, um, who moved to <laughs> South. That's how he said it. Yo, I'm, I'm Justin from the 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 Detroit. You know, all day, all day J. Oh, so night call's good. Mm -hmm. Despite what Frank said. I like the episode. What's what's next week? Do you have a clip for next week, Frank? Nah, Rod stopped doing that back in thir season three. Yeah, because he's gone. So pretty much next week is from Agnes hyphen with love. I watched it. I can tell you, it's a it's a hoot. It's a comedy. Next, it's after it's, that is spur so you know, of the moment. What what's the, what's one after that? Spur of the moment. So we'll be covering those two episodes next week. I watched the first ten minutes of that. That would that one's that one's hard to get. Oh boy! Yeah, we have a lot of bad episodes to get through in season five. Yeah. Um, you think Peel's bad? <laughs> Peel ain't got nothing on Serling, man. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it. I don't think Peel could do this bad. <laughs> hey, at least Richard Donner did next exactly. week. Exactly. From Agnes, Richard Donner did it. I guess that's. 
it's one thing I could talk about. It's got a six point five. That's the moment moment has a seven point two. Just goes to show you you can't trust IMDB for a shit. Nope. This is the part of the series where it's just coasting into the end on the fumes, right? Just it was done already by this point. Yeah. Yeah. Rod was checked out. He was like gone. What are you guys doing? Yeah. No buck. Barely any rod. Rod's like, I just bought a new house. I got to do it and shit. Big Dick Brian was gone. He's dead. Oh, he's got nothing. We got Richard Donner. We got That's Dick it. Donner. That's it. No more Shatner. No more Burge. No more even better than Burge. Jack Lugman. No, we Lugman. do got, but we, but thank God we have, what's his face? <laughs> Fucking the writer, uh, Hammy Jr. Thank God we got him to, to be the caboose. Of this train wreck. What a way to go out in the show with who's our worst. Let's give him the last one. That way I ever can blame him. He he was quoted as saying, I think I'm the one that killed the Twilight Zone. <laughs> I'm like, yes, Amy, you are. <laughs> Self aware were we? <laughs> yeah. And the week after that we're doing three episodes. I don't know if you guys saw the schedule yet. No, I never do. All on the L A W T Z review Twitter feed. Um, this episode didn't get a. I did my Mary fuck kill. It got a. I already said that, didn't I? Yeah, fifty percent Mary. Okay, sorry, I forgot I already did it. Yeah, uh, I like this episode. It might be the last one I like until occurrence of Oak Creek Bridge. And that's not even teasing. No, so is that even fair to say? It's fair, but it's also not fair. It's both. And yeah. then the masks, and then maybe Jeopardy room, and then nothing. No, I think we got um, the encounter coming up, right? Yeah, yeah, There's that one's good. Yeah. We got another puppet one. <laughs> the, we got... the encounter, you know, for all you uh, Star Trek, for all for, for all the Star Trek fans out there, we got um, um, oh my, that guy. It's his first ever. George K. Yep, George, George K. Yep. In the you encounter. say puppets, and a young Charles Band somewhere's like, oh, <laughs> yay, puppets! All right. Charles Band has got a hard on. Uh, Charles Band is the guy that did uh, the Puppet Master movies. Some right? of the world, Charles Band got a full moon. I've never seen any of those. Uh, you're not missing nothing, man. It, it, unless you're really terrified of puppets, uh, they're they're pretty laughably bad. Yeah, I'll get anything for me. If you're listening to the live show or watching the live show or even the podcast tomorrow night, Wednesday, every Wednesday we do uh, LAW the. Tell us the crypt review. Good God. And uh, tomorrow is... Obs- no, what are we doing? Obviously, man. Outer, Outer Limits. Limits. Outer Limits, a feasibility study, episode 129. I saw that you guys are doing Outer Limits. I'm like, oh, come on, come on. Yeah. More than welcome to join. Um, sure. I'll uh, do an Outer Limits with you. Tomorrow, same time, same same bat time, same bat station. Um, any party words of wisdom, guys? Anything else you want to say that we didn't discuss? Any more clips? You know, give up the wheel every once in a while, you overbearing bitches. You let the man drive. She did. You it might just save your life. You might just save your big dick's life. You know, that's all. His big dick is worth more than her life. I have some parting words. Number one reasons to get rid of your fucking landline. Just let go of it. Rip Hello? it out. Use your Hello? cell phone. Hello. This one didn't really survive to be. You know, you know, we always say how kind of, you know, it, yeah, a lot of TZ is very um, relevant for today. This one is not. <laughs> this one's not relevant at all. No. Adam, I'm going to play my other lost clip from Twilight Zone here on the air, if you don't mind. Throw me up there. Oh, wait. Hold on. Fine. Wait. We good? Fine. Huh? And make sure I'm sharing the sound. Yep. Okay, we're good. All right. So this is a clip I found. The producer sent this over. It's an early edit of uh, to sell the, the the series originally to CBS. So here we go. Let me jump the volume real quick. Here we go. <laughs> this is. 
represents <laughs> desert. The desert that you'll see on your screen in a story we call The Lonely. The Lonely is about a man sentenced to a lifetime of solitary confinement. The confinement takes place on a the asteroid far out in space. It's the story about a man slowly succumbing to a kind of nightmarish loneliness. The gradual disintegration of mind and body because human beings have that palpable need for <laughs> most benevolent and compassionate official sends the prisoner a long rectangular containing, well, a machine. A machine inside of a robot built in the form of a woman. It's a robot that and like a human being. A robot that thinks like a human being. Gentlemen, I can only tell you that the lonely, which involves a man and a woman made out of plastic and wires with a machine for a will provide a most bizarre experience as to the physiological extensions of their relationship, that is, man and female <laughs> what they do in their spare time. We're leaving this open. Bold. Bold, Rod. Oh, uh, you really brought it home there at the end. That was good. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe what he tried to get away with early on before the before CBS and the censors and the, the advertisers got caught up and were like, "Okay, pull it back, Rod." Dude, it's they had, they had B roll to waste. You know, they were just they were they were goofing around back then. They were having fun. It know? was unbelievably filthy. They were right? high as fuck, is what they were. <laughs> they were high as. Beep. Yeah, and they were just drinking soda. I mean, you know, some soda pop. Smoking soda cigarettes and just... Yeah, just, you know, staying up for days off of Coca-Cola. Uh-huh. A cola. Yep. Uh-huh. So, uh, that brings us to the end of the episode. I won't do our plug outro because it's a little full with considering our limited cast and half of that is about the 2019 Twilight Zone show, so... Um, Adam. RaidersLawsFlicks.com and you can find me on Twitter at Raiders underscore OTLF. I watch bad movies every weekend. So check us out every Friday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where we watch a, a bad movie. You can score it. You can comment. You can chat with us. And then we give our ratings at the end. Frank. RedDragonsRadio.com for all great podcasts like this one and others. LAWstudios.com. Until next time, in the meantime, I'm Phoenix West. I'm Frank Lynx. And I'm Adam Wilcox. So long, citizens. Hello? 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 Well. Hello? Bye. Hello? Should let me drive, you cunt. <laughs> this big dick's rotting in a grave. You can't have it.